So far, I've been running integration tests. Now it's time to run the application. Normally, when you build a web application, it has to be packaged to a WAR file and then deployed in a server in order to run the application. Here I have built a web application with Spring Boot. And the convenience of it is that it doesn't have to be packaged to a WAR file or deployed in an external server in order to run the application. But that doesn't mean that you cannot do a typical deployment with it. There are quite a few options or ways of running the application. Each has its uses and benefits. We'll explore all of them one by one. First, let's look at the easiest and the quickest option. It is to run the application using Gradle. As I mentioned while creating the build file, there's a boot run task in the Spring Boot plugin which allows us to run the application without having to package it. So all I have to do is to run the task on command line. So Gradle W, boot run. As you can see, the application is starting. Once it's started, I'll send a couple of requests using Postman to see if it's working properly. Now let's first send a GET request. It's returning an empty list. That's because there is nothing in the database. Now I'll send a POST request with the comment message test comment boot run. Let's see if it comes through the GET request. Yes, it's working perfectly. Now the delete. Now it sends back the correct response code. And the comment has been deleted. Perfect. Now let's try the second option. That is to run the application as an executable jar. For this, you don't have to do anything other than to build the application which will produce an executable jar file. Creating the executable jar file is done by the boot jar task of the Spring Boot Gradle plugin. But we don't have to run this explicitly because the assemble task is automatically configured to depend upon the boot jar task, so running assemble or build will also run the boot jar task. And then execute the jar file in command line as you would run any other jar file. So I'll change directory to build libs directory and run java jar and the application jar file. The application is starting up. Okay, now I'll send some requests using Postman to see if it's working. So this is a collection of requests that I have saved earlier and I've written some tests as well. Okay, looks good. All tests have passed. Even if I just send a request through the browser, it should work. So let's see. Yes, it's working perfectly. Now let's try the next option that we have. It is to create an executable WAR file. For this, we need to first work on the commit application class. It already extends from the Spring Boot servlet initializer. So I'll override the configure method like so. This is to initialize the servlet context. Next, I'll add the WAR plugin to the build file. Now I'll run a Gradle build to package this to an executable WAR. So here's the WAR file. Let's run this and see if it works fine. Java jar commence dot war. Application is starting. I'll use the same set of requests to test this one as well. Great, all of them have passed. Last but not least, the old fashioned war deployment to an external server. For this, I'll have to exclude the embedded Tomcat dependency so that it would not conflict with the external server's own classes. The Spring Boot Starter Tomcat dependency is included by the Spring Boot Starter Web dependency that I added to the build file. So to move it out of the implementation dependencies, I'll add it as a provided runtime dependency. 
This will move the libraries to webinf lib provided directory inside the WAV file. If I build the project now, I'll package the application to a WAV file which can be deployed in an external container, such as Wildfly or Tomcat. But what if I want to reduce the size of the WAV file and get rid of the embedded server dependencies completely from the WAV file? If I deploy this in an external server, those dependencies are of no use anyway. So to do that, we should do what we should do is to create a normal WAV file using the original WAV plugin of Gradle. What happened earlier is that even though I added the WAV plugin to the project, the Spring Boot Gradle plugin overrides it by the boot WAV task. To execute the normal WAV task, it should be enabled. So WAV enable true. And I also want to generate the executable WAV file alongside with this so that I can compare the two. So in order to do that, I'll configure the boot WAR task to add a classifier boot to the WAR file generated by it. Now when I build the application, I'll have two WAR files created. One is the normal WAR file without the embedded server and the other is the executable WAR file. So here are the two WAR files. As you can see, the normal WAR file is smaller in size than the executable WAR file. Now I'll deploy this WAR file in the Wildfly server. Copy the WAR into the deployments folder and start the server. So I'll run the same tests on this one as well. Okay, 